Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. Right off the bat, Mike Chi has done it again with some more RetroTink 4K Pro news. So here you see a render of the RetroTink 4K Pro. I've talked about it a couple of times. It seems like this is Mike Chi's next 4K capable upscaler. He says here that he sent the PCB off to fabrication, which is surprisingly fast. I don't think anybody expected that this thing would be anywhere near running or even capable of running, but it sounds like not only is it running, he actually has a production run ready to go. He assumably has all the FPGA chips and everything else, and he's ready to make some of this hardware. Absolutely insane. I don't really know if that brings up the launch date of this at all, or if he was expecting to launch it at all this year. I certainly was not, after how recently the RetroTINK 5X Pro came out. And it says here that next week he'll start on the ID, I guess that's internal dimension work, for an enclosure. So he's working on an enclosure. He has a PCB production run going. Very exciting. I think everybody is kind of waiting with bated breath to see how much this thing is going to cost and when they're going to be able to get a 4K capable retro tank. Next, the mad lad Todd Gill has done it again, this time with a PS2 stand. Now, I know that the PS2 actually did have an official stand. It was kind of like a blue and purple triangle sort of situation. But it looks like Todd has an interesting render here and it kind of looks similar to his PS1 stand that he made last week. I'm not really sure how much those official PS2 stands go for, but if they're going for a lot of money, then it might make sense for Todd to kind of make these PS2 stands too. He'd probably make them in a bunch of different colors so people can customize the look of their PS2s. Todd, I'm sorry for calling your PS1 stand sus. It looks like a lot of people are actually really interested in that PS1 stand, so... I'm sorry that I called it sus. Next, we have a kind of interesting and kind of totally different mod here from Greg from LaserBear. The new Xbox Series S and X have a SSD for storage, and it's sort of a proprietary, weird, Microsoft-y sort of storage solution. And so Greg here has a, an interesting looking sort of adapter board, or I guess these parts here slot somehow into the Xbox Series X. But on the other end here, it looks like you can put an M.2 SSD. And this note on the board here says that only PCIe 4.0 SSDs will work. So PCIe Gen 4 is like the latest generation for SSDs. So I'm really curious if this will work. I always thought that the Xbox Series X solution was kind of proprietary, but maybe it's just the form factor that's proprietary and not really the SSD technology underneath it. So very interesting. I think it's awesome for Greg to branch out with other interesting mods and for Xbox Series owners that I think this will be totally handy for them to be able to use a cheaper SSD with this adapter as opposed to paying the Microsoft price for their adapter. Next, we have a picture of what looks like a case for the all-in-one GBA HD board that Consoles for You created. He had a poll here of whether or not people want a visible label or a hidden label version of the shell. So in this case, this is the hidden cart variant where you can't see the game label. So I'm assuming the visible label part is more cut out here so you can see what game is inside. I actually really like this design. It does look pretty simple. I mean, it's just a rectangle, but I kind of like the sharp corners as opposed to some of the curvy stuff we've gotten from like the GBA Consolizer and the GBHD. So I really like this project and I can't wait to see the case design finalized. Next, we have this project that Arcade Projects actually tweeted about. It looks like it's an open source Tamagotchi. Yeah, you remember those little egg shaped things when you were a kid where they'd probably poop themselves to death in a minute if you don't like constantly click all the buttons. Honestly, this project is kind of cool. I mean, it seems like it wouldn't be too hard to put together, even if you had to hand solder everything. Probably totally and completely useless, and I remember being super frustrated as a kid with Tamagotchis. I never really knew what the heck I was doing. I think this might be an excuse to kind of put this together and try to play with it some more. It looks like it uses this MCU Gachi sort of emulator thing, which I think can actually run on computers too. So maybe if you're bored and you don't want to build the actual open Tama here, you can probably just have it running on your computer. Next up, I don't normally do coming back in stock posts here. I usually just try to announce when the project is coming out and then usually I might tweet about when the actual product is releasing. But here we finally have information about when the GBHD Advance, which is Gamebox's GBA consoleizer, the DIY kit will be available on June 1st for sale. Price is $159.99 that comes with a translucent case. There will be custom case colors available too and it's limit one per customer for right now. As much as I'd like to say I don't know if we need another Game Boy consoleizer project, but I mean, screw it. The more the merrier. I think it'd be interesting to see 
this project and how it compares to both the GBA HD as well as the GBA consoleizer, just kind of on output and usability of the interface if there is one. So yeah, I'm excited to get my hands on one of these and compare it to the other Game Boy Advance consoleizer options. Last but not least is something that kind of came out of absolutely nowhere. Red Herring32 is the creator of the Open Tendo, which is a replacement motherboard for the NES. He created this project called Tiny Tendo. And brace yourselves because this is a little bit crazy and really awesome at the same time. Tiny Tendo is a real hardware handheld NES. So it's not using an FPGA and it's not an emulator. There's no pie inside of here. This is genuine. NES, CPU, and PPU hardware. If we take a look at these screenshots here, so it's got an LCD screen here, and if you look at this picture, this is sort of the guts of this whole thing. So on the top, it looks like there's some kind of, maybe a battery charging circuit. In the middle here, on the left, is the actual little mini motherboard, and you could see these kind of tiny chips right here on the top. That's the cut down PPU and CPU. He says that they're about 7% of the real size of that the original PPU and CPU. So I'm assuming all the other circuitry on this board is just ancillary stuff to get the NES working. You see there's some wiring going over to these other boards. I guess there's an audio amp here, and this is the driver board for the LCD, and I'm not really sure what the middle of oh, the button PCB. So everything on the right is sort of like ancillary stuff, the screen, buttons, and the sound. But I mean, if really that's everything for the NES, that's crazy tiny. All right, let's keep looking at these tweets because there's a lot to go over here. This is another picture of the cut down. I think in this case, it's the CPU maybe? Compared to an SD card. So it's smaller than a micro SD card. Here's a good side by side of the original chip on the top here and then the cut down and sanded version on the bottom. So this form factor of the Tiny Tendo is actually using custom cartridges. I guess they must have the real NES ROMs inside of them, but they're tiny. A real NES cartridge is smaller than the whole Tiny Tendo. Here you see the actual custom cartridges that were designed by this bucket mouse bite. This project is open source as well, so you can head over to Mouse Bite Labs' GitHub if you want some more information about those custom NES cartridges. Uses USB-C for charging. I'm guessing there's some kind of a little lipo inside of here. So that's the whole project in a nutshell. It's pretty much a an original Game Boy sized handheld NES using real hardware. Very awesome and I'd love to cover more of this. So Red Herring, I'm excited to work with you, maybe try to put something together to create one of these. But I'm excited to know what you think about this Tiny Tendo. Is this something that you would ever consider doing yourself? How do you think about cutting down those CPUs to be 7% of their original size? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.